So hello, welcome back to Blake's Den. This is my 1997 Rover Mini Cooper MPI. And in this video, I'm going to run through the P-Scan diagnostic tool. So what is P-Scan? Well, it's uh, this box here, available from that web address. And on one end you've got an OBD style port and the other end you've got USB to allow you to connect it up to your computer. So the Rover Mini MPI runs a, a Rover MEMS 2 uh, ECU on it, uh, as does many other Rovers at the time, MGFs, TFs, ZRs, MGZRs, ZS, 25, 45, etc. Um, and what this does is it allows you to see the values the live values that the ECU is seeing and also allow you to see any faults and so you can detect any issues. So I quite often see um, posts and I get asked questions of what, what value should my lambda sensor be at? What value should my crank sensor be at? Well, I don't know, but I do know that this Mini runs well and it runs really well. I was out in it this morning and it was flying. So I know it, it, it runs good. So what I thought, I'll plug this in and we'll get some reference values out of it. And hopefully you can then use that as almost like a reference library to compare against your Rover Mini MPI. So what do you need? You need a Windows laptop. Um, you can run it on Linux as well, I believe. Um, you need the software, which comes from a website and when you buy it. And you need the cable and you need to plug the cable in. So down here is, I can't even show you because the Mini is that cramped. So this is where the OBD port plugs in. Of course, I've got it the wrong way around. So there we are, that is now plugged in. So then I'll swap to the laptop and I'll do some screen recording and show you what's happening now. I've switched to a screen recorder now uh, and then through the P-Scan interface, you select the port, select the language you, language you want and provided you're connected up. It does this little talk and handshake when you get to the um, the menu here where you can select what parameters you want to look at. So I want to look at petrol engine and I'll go down to the MEMS 2J, click next. It then does a bit of communication. Uh, it takes, takes a few seconds to do um, as it's sort of talking to the ECU. And then hopefully on the next screen, yeah, you get the, your um, details so there I've pressed the information button it's brought up my ECU identifier I've also brought up the error codes there's some error codes which exist all the time on an MPI mini because um, th those sensors aren't there so you can erase those error codes you can see that it's clearly erased and then you instantly you get the same errors again so now I'll start looking at some of the live data which is coming from the ECU so once you have the live data up, uh, the refresh rate is quite slow. So it's about three seconds per variable. It reduces the less number of variables you're, you're looking at. Um, that's just a limitation of the ECU. So here you can see I've started the car now. You can see that the engine speed is varying. So we're at 1100-ish RPM. And you can also see things like the uh, cooling temperature and the oil temperature increasing. So probably of note here is the um, stuff to do for lambda sensor, the oxygen sensor. You can see the voltage is there and how those voltages are varying as the car is sort of compensating the tune uh, as the engine begins to warm up. You can also see that there's some values which are blank as well. Uh, that's because those sensors aren't used. And there, yeah, you can see now the uh, cooling temperature is 42 degrees, oil temperature is 43, so it's slowly creeping, creeping up. You can see the intake temperature is 37 degrees as well. Uh, obviously, the intake's in the warm engine bay. Uh, I've just given the revs a small blip there. You can see the revs have increased to 2,000 RPM. And then they should drop off as I, as I lift off. There we are. Coming down to trying to establish a... Still on a sort of a high speed idle at the moment, and the car's not fully warm yet. Uh, you can also see, you know, the status of, of various switches as well. Aircon, I, I haven't got aircon in this one, it's not a Japanese model. 
Um, you can see uh, things like when the fan is supposed to come on, the stepper position for the uh, throttle body, which sets the engine speed. Um, you can also see uh, battery voltage. That's a good one to check that your alternator is running. And working fine, so there I've got 13.9 volts. And I've got good signals from the camshaft signal in the crankshaft signal. Uh, the cam position one is not reading particularly well because it's on the very slow refresh at the moment. Uh, likewise, the crank position as well. You can see the crank position is changing, but that's because it's interpolating this every sort of three seconds. You can also see how the injectors are firing as well. Um, how long they're open for, so 1.1 milliseconds. And yeah, you can see the voltage decreasing as well on the oxygen sensor as the car warms up. So we're down to just below 1000 RPM now, or around 1000 RPM. The cooling temperature 63, so we're beginning to creep up there. Uh, and yeah, the, the car's running fine. All the parameters seem steady and seem to be correct. So hopefully you can use this as a bit of a reference library. If you've got an MPI Mini and it's not running correctly, you can look at these values here and compare them to the values that you're getting for your Mini. So hopefully you found that live data useful. Um, it'd be interesting to know if anyone's got similar live data and has different numbers coming out of theirs. Um, but yeah, hope, hopefully you can then use that data to do a bit of a diagnostic check against your own rubber mini MPI and see if you've got any sensors that need replacing. So thank you for watching. If this video has been useful, press the like button below. If you've got any questions, ask them below as well. I respond to all of my comments. And please consider subscribing to the channel, it costs you nothing. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.